Hey guys, so it is the end of May here. Actually, like, yeah, approaching the end of May. And I can't believe it, but like three or four weeks ago, there was like 10 inches of snow on the ground. And ever since the sun and the rain came, wow, things have started to pop. Some of our leaves are getting eaten by the spongy moths, formerly known as the gypsy moths here. Uh, so we still have leaves on our tree, but probably not for long. But they don't bother the herbaceous plants. And I wanted to give you just a little update on the pollinator garden. So if you recall, this is something that we started in mid-September. So as we were taking up the lawn for the bulb lawn and planting those 70,000 bulbs, we also ended up inevitably taking up the lawn here to create this nice organic shape for this pollinator bed. And you know, we actually usually do no dig methods where we just put cardboard on top of the pre-existing sod and then we put a layer of topsoil compost and then a layer of mulch and then we plant in that. But we ran out of cardboard. <laughs> we used about a quarter acre of cardboard and we couldn't, we were scrounging for cardboard like crazy. So we figured we'd just take up the sod, which is interesting because then we could actually compare and contrast what I found with like a little bit more of the no dig methods is that we definitely get more vole pressure with the cardboard and then the topsoil compost. This doesn't seem to have been a problem in this bed. Um, and just to give you an overview of kind of like what we did here, it's more, we're going more for like peaches and corals fading into kind of uh, light pinks into raspberries punctuated with whites and also these red purples. Now, what happened is that when I started this bed, it was pretty late in the season. I, I started planting in late September through mid-October, and you get a lot of fall blooming plants during that time. So what I see here when I'm looking, and I think this is why you pl plan gardens and sometimes you plan them in layers, is that um, we don't have a lot of early bloomers, but you could see that Phlox home fries, I mean, I just watered this bed as you could see, this is just about finished, but these were some early bloomers and actually you could see it's pretty low growing. So this area with the stones, I have pretty low growing plants. This is one of our native phloxes, although this is a cultivar. It's called Phlox subulata and it's a creeping phlox, but this is called candy stripe. I really love this one. And I actually bought it in bulk and I liked it so much. You could see I planted most of it down here but I just got some bulk ones and just planted some of them up here. So most of this stuff had been planted last year, but I just interspersed with some plants that I got here and there. And you'll see another early bloomer is the Dianthus. So these are plants that are often seen in more rock garden areas. So I kind of planted them a little bit higher up next to the, uh, the stones here so that they don't get too wet of feet. And because we actually raised up the bed a bit more, these don't get very wet. Although I have to say, what happened with this dry riverbed look for the stepping stones is that it wasn't so dry during the fall because we did get some pretty powerful rainstorms and this was a stream, wasn't it, Sonder? It turned into a well, stream one time. Really just over there where you're sitting because yeah. there's a low spot, but yeah. that's quite high over there. It is, it is. And uh, so anyway, I love the look of this flock. So I was like, you know what, I might as well get some more. And I have some with the, you know, kind of the snowflake white ones with the pinwheels. And then you'll see some of the sedums are actually coming up. So I actually have some succulents here. Uh, this is, a, I, think, I believe, um, saponaria. It's another type of crawling plant. I have some 
uh, low growing oregano. This is elf and thyme. And then you'll see again, some of the uh, hens and chicks, the semper vivums here. So it's kind of cool to be able, here's another semper vivum. You they're just tucked away in there. It's like, I love gardening like this because there's so much to look at and see. So if you believe, can you believe it? This bed has uh, over 170 different types of species and varieties of plants in here. And I realize I really love planting this way where I kind of just mix and match all different types of plants. Rarely do you see like a lot of these herbaceous perennials with kind of rock garden plants and succulents with grasses and uh, sedges and all that kind of stuff combined. But you're just trying to find the microclimates in your um, and the right conditions within your garden. Here's a, a bush poppy right here, a little bush mallow, mallow that kind of also crawls. So you'll see a lot of crawling plants here. These are the geums, uh, trifolium, I think that's called, but I can't remember the species name. And then since some of the alliums are popping up. And then something else that's blooming here is the catch flies. So you can see that these actually started to bloom. And right here, as well. And then just like a couple weeks ago, we did have some tulips, but you could also see that the tulips have lost their heads, except for that one right there, strangely enough, it's just starting to, to emerge. So that seems to be a little slower. And then these are also geums. This cultivar is called petticoat peach, and then I also have petticoat rose. So I planted kind of the peach and corals more in this section. And then the pink ones are more towards this se section. So I'll show you, I think some are actually in bloom here. So this is the rose color. And then this GM right here, I love this. Look at the seed heads of these. Aren't they just like fairy tale dust? It's so darling. And then the sedums right here that you see that I've planted have this kind of like raspberry hue. And the alliums again are kind of punctuated with that purple red. And some of that other purple red that I have planted here are going to be the liatris and the verbenas are kind of that purple red shade. I actually have grasses planted in there that are the Muhlenbergia capillaris, the ruby color. And then they also have this kind of purplish hue as well. So some of that will be coming through more towards the fall. So, I, you know, this is my, my first real season, seeing these plants kind of spread and bloom out. And ultimately what I'd like to see is that these plants will spread so you don't see any more of this hardwood mulch because the weeds that are coming in, like this one, you know, come in through seed because I know they're not coming up from below because we removed the sod, right? So you have some seed that blows in. And I really haven't had to maintain this be bed across the seasons, largely because we did take off the sod and we put this kind of thick layer of mulch and we're gonna be planting very densely. The way that I'd prefer to manage my garden is that I would have to just cut back after a while where I'm just like, wow, there's, this is so floriferous and it's, it's, it's you know, become so, I wouldn't say congested, but filled that um, they're kind of like bumping shoulder to shoulder with one another. And then I could actually cut and divide and propagate and give away and sell or whatever you want to do. So ideally these will all kind of um, be like friendly brothers and sisters kind of bumping elbows with one another. And then the only, you know, errant weeding that I would have to do probably would be coming in from the sides. So you see this where, where the grass like touches this area, you're going to get a few more weeds and we'll just have to kind of redefine the bed edges again and again. But I really like the way this looks. Um, I'll probably end up planting some more early bloomers so that we could see blooms from May through November essentially. And then we'll get those really nice seed heads throughout the winter months, which really come in handy for the songbirds. I mean, I often see our uh, slate-colored juncos out here literally jumping to eat the seed heads. 
Um, even though we feed them in the winter some bird seed, they still want to get into that seed head um, and get some of those uh, seeds for maybe some extra energy through the winter season. But we also have this for the birds too. So, you know, I love looking out the window from the common house and seeing them use the water dish. So I actually had another uh, carved stone here, but I noticed our chipmunk was running behind in our shade garden and he has this designated path. And so I put that stone back there for him. And I noticed that he likes to, to use that when he's running through in the path and, and drink the water. And we just put a pedestal in there too. And I noticed that the blue jays particularly like to use the, the pedestal. It's a little crooked, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But I, I'm i so excited for this garden. And I think like, you know, it's this is garden number kind of three and a half, four <laughs> that we've put in. But this is a big garden. And like I said, there's like 170 different types of plants in here and I'm still slowly planting it up. I'm still kind of like feeling and sitting in, setting into this whole uh, garden and seeing what kind of pops up throughout the season. But that's like really part of the, the fun of all this is actually seeing things grow and spread and bloom and in some cases die back and what doesn't do well. Oh, and one more thing that I'd like to show you, I do have some kind of shrubs in here. So I have a kind of a shrub rose. It's an, obviously not in bloom, but I have one that's uh, an apricot and that one's a more rose colored actually, like a pink color. And then you'll notice that this is kind of hilled up a little bit more. Well, this is in a terracotta pot. So I might wanna uh, cover this. And I notice that this plant wasn't really winter hardy. I kind of, you know, wanted to push my limits here. This is an Albizia. Can't remember the cultivar name, maybe chocolate something. I'll have to double check on that. But this gets really cool feathery uh, pink blooms that look like the heads of that GM plant that I showed you that have that really nice feathery seed head. And this can be a pest in areas where it's warmer, but it won't set seed here. And I noticed, I was like, well, if we, have a, if, if we have a mild winter, this will probably do well. Well, we didn't have a mild winter. We had a very cold, erratic win winter, as you may have seen from uh, the bulb story that we shared. So if you didn't see that, we'll link, we'll link to it here. So what I'm doing now is we're putting it into a terracotta pot and terracotta pots are po uh, porous, so they breathe. So we'll be able to interact with the rest of the environment and I'll pull it out in the winter months and I'll probably keep it in the chicken coop because we don't have the greenhouse set up yet. And that will be warm enough for this plant, fingers crossed technically, to be able to make it through to the next winter. So I'll just overwinter it indoors and you know, hope for the best. And you know, people do that with their figs um, as well if they have turkey figs. But when it grows up, would you ever leave it in there? Um, I probably wouldn't unless our so zone- I have to always take it out. I'll probably always take it out before the winter hits. Okay. Yeah, so, and, and people do that, you know, with their, with a lot of their patio plants or anything, they'll take them back into their greenhouse and overwinter them and then take them out in the summer. And then we also have um, this one, which is a calmia. I think it would probably prefer to be in a little bit more shade. So this is calmia latifolia. This might be red elf. I can't remember which one, um, which cultivar I had planted, but this is a mountain laurel. And when we didn't have our deer fence, I put this fence around it, but you know what? I kept the fence around it. <laughs> Even though they're supposed to be deer resistant, um, when we didn't have the deer fence, I, we noticed our deer, the deer in the area actually did nibble on some of them, but not, but I think they nibbled, tried it, and they're like, that was not good. So we had some nibbles and not like a complete defoliation, um, which last year we had complete defoliation of our rhododendrons. This year they were so floriferous, it was just pretty amazing. And then we have lupinus, perennis, lupine, lupin. Um, so this is the, uh, like a kind of a raspberry color shade of lupin and it actually grows a lot lower. So if you know some of the, the native uh, lupinus, it grows actually quite large and bushy. It actually looks like a big herbaceous shrub. Um, so that'll be kind of nice to actually see that grow. And then we have a lot of the um, 
guaras here, the wand flowers, in all different colors. They're actually obviously not in bloom. And we just got two more. So there's two high ones we saw at Home Depot, actually. Um, most of the plants here are from bluestone perennials, local or rare roots. So I, I really love those places to shop for some in interesting plants. And then you'll see some of the more um, moss floxes again right here. And again, they grow really low. And I don't want to hide the rocks. It's okay if some of them are, you know, feathered in. So I had to really strategically plant in a way that it didn't cover some of the small, um, cute things that we have, you know, in here, like the stones and the wood. And then also you'll see the hand carved fungi or the mushrooms, which everybody always asks if, um, if they're real, you know, they want to actually go out and touch them to see if they are real. But you know, in this, in the springtime and in the fall, we do actually get a bunch of mushrooms that grow up in here. So combined with those mushrooms, with the, um, with the actual real mushrooms, it, it kind of like plays tricks on you. So again, there's lots of little things to kind of look at and play around in this garden. This garden really makes me excited, as you can tell. And I'm really excited to plant continually, seeing how it grows and planting it up along the way. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour. Early, um, early spring tour, I guess, of this garden. But like I said, very happy how it's turning out. <laughs>